While some medical procedures have declined during the pandemic, University Hospitals is on pace this year to top the number of transplants performed last year. Kidney transplants are first, including one amazing surgery that happened right here in Cleveland. A transplant shrouded in secrecy with a reveal, one that senior health correspondent Monica Robbins shares with us tonight. This is the story about a Marine and a minister, Chris and Walter. Chris spent 23 years protecting his brothers in arms. Walter spends his days saving souls, bonded by blood, but separated in age by 10 years and by miles too. Yeah, I missed a lot. Uh, most of his significant activities I missed. I think I was uh, I flew in the day before he got married and flew out the day after he got married. Uh, all three of my nephews being born, I, I missed all of them. Most of his high school highlights, yeah, a lot. Walter sees it differently. He's always had my back in that same sense, that uh, he's always stood up for me. Um, he has been there for a lot of my big moments. My father died when I was in seventh grade. He never got to see me play. And my brother was there through all of it. And uh, he's kind of filled in those moments. Um, like I say, my, some, just some glory moments for, in life for me. He's always been there. Diagnosed with type 1 diabetes as a child, Walter carried on with life until as an adult, his kidneys began to fail. A transplant, his best option. His family offered to help. My mother, I, I believe she was going to try and be my donor, but uh, she had high blood pressure, so she couldn't do it. Um, I had an aunt who stepped up, and I had some more people who stepped up, but they all had complications. So, uh, I mean, dialysis was uh, the best option. By this time, big brother Chris retired from the Marines and came back home. His little brother in trouble. Chris got tested too, but kept it a secret. I didn't want to go in there and get his hopes up. I didn't want to go in there and be preparing for something that they come back and tell me you're no good. Great news, he was a match, but he still didn't want to tell his little brother. Chris had his reasons. I, I didn't want him to um, feel like he needed to change up anything in his life um, because I was helping him out. Um, and, and also just to keep myself humble as well. Like, hey, if I'm, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I don't need to hold it over his head. I don't need to say anything about it. I just need to go do it and get it done and, and let him, you know, live. While waiting for the transplant date, Chris decided to document his own journey. Even on surgery day, he hatched a plan to keep Walter from thinking he was the donor. He called me the night before and he's like, <laughs> hey, where are you at right now? And I was like, send me a picture of where you are right now and what you're doing. Because I, I was like, well, if he's in the hospital, then you'll see the hospital. He sends me this, like, like he said, an old picture. A picture that looked like Chris at home, not at the hospital. Surgery day came at University Hospitals, and both brothers made it through just fine. Chris and the medical team had one more surprise for Walter, a note written by Chris held next to his donated kidney. It read, no greater love, I am my brother's keeper. The day after surgery, it was time for the big reveal. When you find out that he's the donor, I mean, Chris says he's always had my back in that same sense, that uh, he's always stood up for me. Um, he has been there for a lot of my big moments. I had it to give, and, and he needed it, so it, it was just, it was one of those things um, that it just needed to be done. A story of brotherly love, but they insist there's a bigger meaning behind sharing their story. They hope it saves lives and brings awareness to the critical need for minority organ donors. If there's a family member or someone close to you that you're a match to and you can help, um, I, I would highly suggest that people do some research, um, talk to the donor coordinators, and just get the information and, and, and sit through to learn about uh, what they can do to help uh, their family members or uh, people that they know or don't know. Two brothers connected by blood, love, and a life-saving gesture.
Monica Robbins, 3 News. Wow, not much to say other than what an amazing story. Two cool guys, just fantastic. It really is. It's incredible. Yeah. Makes you want to tear up, right? It does. But a happy really ending, does. so that's good to know. Yeah, definitely.